So if we could start at the beginning, yeah. um, why and when did you uh, first grow a beard? I grew a beard when I was 21 because uh, I had a job at that point. I hadn't gone to university and so uh, I needed people to take me seriously and to think I was older than I was. And now that I'm 33, I realise why nobody takes you seriously when you're 21. It's because you're still a child. <laughs> uh, but that was, that was why. It was to sort of try and man up a bit. Um, and of course, you know, through the course of your, your 20s mm. um, and of course my extensive research, yeah. I've noticed two particular styles that you've adopted, uh, the horseshoe yeah. and the Van Dyke. Yeah. Um, are they your favourite two? Do you have any plans for a third in the trilogy? Uh, well, I, I horseshoed, I Van Dyked. I actually, uh, before anybody would have known me or of me, I rocked the Jim the Anvil Neidhart which was a long beard that you would be permanently pulling to a point. Oh, wow. That's um, that was quite... Uh, very quite sort something. of slayer, I suppose. Well, it was very slayer, and I had a shaved head at the time. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and it, it really worked in terms of getting on the tube every morning. Suddenly, I had a seat. <laughs> because you would get on and people would go, no, don't be near that guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I've, I've had a few. I, 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 I do like the... Uh, the handlebar, the, uh, the, the the classic British handlebar with the flick, mm. I think that is really the great moustache. Yeah. Um, do you ever envisage a, a day when you won't have one? Um, you know. Well, I'm uh, funny enough, I'm about to do the touring production of One Man, Two Governors, and so I play Francis, and there's no way Francis would be rocking a mo. Mm. So uh, I've the reason I'm sort of a bit more shaven than I would normally be is I just had to do the publicity pictures. And so for the whole of that tour, there'll be four months... Uh, from October through to February next year, that uh, I will be moless. Oh, do you worry that, like Samson, you may lose your sort of acting I'm powers? I'm terrified. And... <laughs> uh, although having uh, having had to get rid of it uh, not that long ago, I, uh, I I feel better about it now. The day that I shaved, I went bowling that night, and that was always going to be for me the acid test. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't break 120, then the mo had to come back, no questions asked. But. Uh, I think I scored like a one four one, and so I feel pretty good about myself. That's good to know. So you've yeah. got you've got a few options now. Yeah, going absolutely. Forward. I mean, trust me, it was a massive relief. <laughs> um, so, any general tips, secrets um, that our readers, you know, would 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 benefit from? A lot of people have asked me for um, beard and moustache growing tips. I think the it's not that I can give anybody the secret to having it grow. A lot of people worry about patchiness. Mm. A lot of guys don't get it growing through in here, and so they're worried about doing the, uh, the big 70s porno tash. Mm. But of course the trick is that if you grow these ends slightly longer, you can actually um, comb down. Oh, so you'll cover the patchiness. That's, uh, that's certainly one tip. Um, otherwise, I think get a, get a decent trimmer is the other one, because uh, the difference between, Ugh, have you seen that guy with the tash, through to, oh, oh, have you seen that guy with the tash, is simply about upkeep. Excellent. Um, you also entered the World Beard and Moustache Championships in yes, Brighton a few years ago, I believe. Yeah, came fourth. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. What was the standard like? How did you feel in such exalted company? <clears throat> I think, you know, we're all Googling now. And so uh, a quick Google of the World Beard and Moustache Championships, you'll realise that a guy turning up with an English uh, handlebar entering the moustache category, brackets, natural. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're, in the, you're in the kiddie pool, you know. Uh, it's, it's like Michael Phelps is about to dive that way and you're splashing around over here. So you weren't allowed wax, you weren't allowed any kind of uh, setting products. Mm -hmm. It was just there's you and your tash. There was one guy who had uh, his beard shaped like a full suspension bridge. So, Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I, at the point where you meet that guy, you feel a little foolish. Um, it's like you've tipped up next to Brad Wiggins with your stabilisers on. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the experience very much. The, the thing that I really loved about it is that the World Beard and Moustache Championships took place in Brighton. Mm. And yet... Uh, a lot of beard and moustache clubs from around the world had arrived there. Um, so uh, American beard and moustache clubs, uh, a lot of Bavarian, you know, the, yeah. the Germans take it all very seriously, some Swiss and things like that. But these guys are used to being older guys who are in a very niche kind of gang. <clears throat> they just hadn't realised to what extent a moustache and beard championship just tickles the funny bone of your average British person. 
So they'd laid out the bottom of the uh, NEC or whatever it's called down at the is it BEC or something, Brighton Exhibition Centre, maybe on the seafront anyway, and, and it would be like seats for a thousand people. Mm. And most of them would be competitors and their families, and it was really just an excuse for a jolly. They hadn't realised that upon hearing this was happening, people from all over the country were going to arrive. And the exhibition centre suddenly was ringing kind of staff to open up the upper galleries. And guys who are used to competing in beard and moustache championships, like four other people there going, <laughs> suddenly had 8,000 people going, yeah! Please meet Jürgen. <laughs> Jürgen is sporting a full Fu Manchu. Go on, Jürgen! Like, and these old Bavarian men, honestly, the, the one guy who won stood up and went, I have been taking part in these competitions for many years. And I have to say, it's never been like this. This is one of the most wonderful days of my life. Um, and in four years, when we host it in my hometown, you are all invited. And people just went, and we're all coming. <laughs> It was a magnificent day. It was the idea of just applauding people who were doing nothing. Literally, people would, <laughs> would walk around, stand at the front, and people would just go mental applauding the beard, and they were sort of... And people were just losing their minds. It was such a good day. It's, I'm not going to lie. I mean, almost everybody was utterly shit-faced. <laughs> yeah, so that, I mean, but, but, it's, but it's that been, only added to it. It's vindication for the years of effort, isn't it? Oh, I mean, yeah. that doesn't happen overnight. If you've it? got a suspension bridge growing out of your face, that's not something you decided the week <laughs> before the competition, is it? That's that's a decision you've made sometime in the late '80s, <laughs> and now you are, you know, just reaping the reward. Um, and I suppose uh, on that note, you know, who are your beard inspirations? That that guy or beard other heroes. people in uh, beard heroes? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, for my own personal uh, tash of choice, you've got to be looking Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what are you going to do, brother, when these twenty-four inch pythons run wild on you? He was a man who, as a as a child, told me to eat my vitamins, say my prayers, and stay in school. I always felt on the right track, rocking the Hogan. You know, I always felt like there was a man who had looked inside myself and demanded more. And the uh, the moustache seemed to echo those sentiments. Um, I, I'm, I'm always a big fan of uh, the, the sort of when you see the proper English handlebar, mm -hmm. especially when it's well kept, because that, again, that's a whole lifestyle choice. It's not like if you've got that moustache, you're then just throwing on some sweatpants and an oversized T-shirt and a baseball cap and whipping down the shops. That, at the point where you've got that moustache, you're buying a lot of tweed, you're, you're going to get a lot of sort of heavy alcohol content, uh, aftershaves and pomades, a trilby, mm -hmm. uh, an old-fashioned, ridiculously heavy bicycle, a cricket bat. You know, you, you, you can't just wander into that. So when I see a man with one, I just think, God bless you. This is... This transcends simple moustachery mm -hmm. and has become something to which I think, as English people, we should all aspire. The quiet, understated heroism of a stiff yet hirsute upper lip.